everybody is on. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Okay. Stiffness. We have uh, talked about stiffness. It is the rigidity of any object. Uh, strength. It is uh, the behavior when any force is applied to the uh, material or material. Ductility is uh, the measure of deforming plastically without any fracture. So somebody asked me about uh, the Bangla name of ductility and that is nomonio. Okay. Nomonio. So ductility is equals to nomonio. Okay. I think I am clear now. Toughness or resilience is Shohan Shilota. Okay. Hardness Tamra Jani. Keep Riman Kotin Cheta. Okay. Now let's uh, go forward. So we were showing you some uh, types of loadings. We have showed you four types of loadings. One is tensile, compressive, shear, and torsion. We did not go inside them. Uh, now I will try to show you the difference of these uh, loads. Okay. So let's just start drawing. That will be easier for us. Okay. So can you see the uh, drawings? I will draw. So if you have a metal like this, suppose this is your metal and this is your... So, so in this object or in this metal, we are going to apply forces, right? So one type of force is while you're trying to extend the whole object by doing two tensile tensile forces in both direct both side and opposite directions right outward outward so this will be called tensile load is that clear if i have an object and I try to compress this too. So this will be called compressive load, right? This is compressing. This is trying to extend the length and this one is trying to compress the length. So very easily we can understand this and this is compressive. Okay. So these two loads are given. Now comes the next one. What is the next one? The next one is shear, right? So shear is something like this. Suppose a body is like this, okay? <clears throat> so we will try to slip this surface over this surface, okay? So how we can do, we can add the, if we can add a force which is taking this surface over this and we can add a force which is taking this surface over this. So by adding these two, these two surface, these two forces, which one will be greater? Suppose this is F1 and this is F2. If F1 is greater than F2, then the deformation will take like this. Okay, this will be a previous position. From your previous position, it has become this. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. What I'm trying to say. So, this is the force that tries to slip one surface over another. So, what if F2 is, uh, what if F2 is greater than F1? So, the shape will change, right? Right? 
in both cases if you see it creates a angle right okay so an angle is created for shear forces okay Sorry, sir. and the next one is torsion right let's just clear the whole thing excuse me sir so in case of torsion what you need to do you need to make a twist right make a twisting effect you put a force here and here so f1 and f2 okay or you can do what you can do if you don't want to put two forces you can have a fixed point and then you can twist this both will create a torsion okay so what happens in this case in this case if this is going in this area so this becomes this okay so another theta is created okay yes sir in last class sir, you told that in case of shear sir one surface should be fixed sir. yes so, you can do that also if you want to keep this surface fixed sir, and try to sleep away sir, yes, sir. To sleep sometime away. before sir you told that if f2 is greater than f1 that that the twist will be in opposite direction but sir how then if we give the force from the left then after then i mean that will go to right or I didn't understand that part properly, sir. In the case of shear, sir. In case of shear, okay. Sorry, yes, sir. Why, sir, if F2 is greater than F1, that twisty will be go towards I mean, right, left, sir. Okay, what I tried to show you that if you have a force F1 in this way and F2 in this way, okay. So how the shape will change? That will be dictated which one of this is greater. If one greater, then Charles to sir. Okay, so if one will be greater, so this will twist in this area. Okay, if F2 is greater, it will go in this area, this way, right? Now understood? Sir, yes, sir. Okay, what about this twisting? I understood, sir. This twisting is also uh, the same, right? Yes, sir. You have. My drawings are not good. I'm not really conversant with this device. Okay. It will, it will develop. Okay. So for twisting, I can keep one fixed, then I can twist in any direction or whatever I choose. Okay. According to that, an angle of twist will be created. This will be angle of twist. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Sir, your voice is not clear. Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, whatever in direction I twist it angle of twist will be created either in this direction or in this direction whatever you call angle of twist will be there okay so this is called torsional loading clear i think i have shown you the differences of this all this drawing but let me add some new things that you might need you might need in future first there are uh, forces let's have another type of forces okay so if my force is actually actually normal to the surface this will be called normal force okay if my force is trying to create one shear, 
then this will be called shear forces. Okay, why I am telling you this? Because force and force and stress has a relation. Okay, so the type of force will create that type of stresses. So normal force will create normal stresses, shear force will create shear stresses. That is our next topic of discussion. Okay. That is our next topic of discussion. So let's go back to the slide again. Can you see the slide? So this is your stress and strain. So stress, what is stress? Stress in very simple way, we can tell that load per area. So now what is your load? So what we have discussed the last day or last lecture that every time you apply a force on any object or any material, there will be a resistance force against that deformation, right? So when I say that stress is equals to force per area, this force actually is stating that this is that resistance force, not the force that you have applied. Okay, but, but in 100% or 99% time, this resistance force is equal to the applied force. That is why we, we take the applied force because resistance force, there is no actual uh, way to measure that. Okay. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Ami force apply korbo, tahon she bostur intrinsic property karone, vitorkar property karone, actor resistance force create hobe. She resistance force per area is equal to stress, not the applied force per area. I am going to tell you a resistance force is not a way. We have to say that the applied force equals to resistance force. We have to calculate the applied force. But actually, by definition, it is the resistance force. Fortunately, it is equal. Applied force to create quota, but Judy Kolna Hoto. In that case, other can to own no have a Nishta Birkota Hoto. So do not fool yourself. Okay, could be basic actor Jinish. I want you to write this down. Very basic thing. Okay, on a Boroboro interview to Java engineer Hisha Java, Jane a short actor Jinish Jono, you will be humiliated. Okay. A basic concept of Tik Takbana. On a borrower of Bahavaga University Engineer Ajene, a choto basic in Shat Kajai. Chot token to very simple. When you, when you finish four years of graduation, then when you face this sort of easy questions and you fail to answer it properly, it is very, very embarrassing. Okay. Borrower Professor Rai Shot Soto question Kuri Hore, basic check Kore. So Stress, Johani Kyo Jigishkar Bishibak Shumay, Shove Vulaj, stress is sir, equals to load per area or force per area. So, which force? If you do not actually state that, then the professor will ask, What force? Tahon Kintu, on the Matakach Karana, force to force C, Kibola, sir. Actually, Johan applied force, force apply Korahai. Shatter against the resistance for size, shatter divided by area is equal to your stress. Clear? I want response. Clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. sir, is it actually resistance force applied per area? No, no, no. Resistance force created because of the applied force. Yes. Bustu ache, Tarubutu force this all. Suppose ten Newton. A ten Newton ke absorb corajone, Othova, a ten Newton ke transmit corajone, she takano june, she deform na hor june, at a resistance force create corre. That force per area is equal to stress. Okay? 
যখন টেনশন কম্প্রেশন দ্যাট মিন্স ওই নরমাল ফোর্স আমি দেখালাম না একটু আগে সেই নরমাল ফোর্স এর ইনস্টে আসে তখন সেটাকে আমরা স্ট্রেস বলি আর যখন শিয়ার ফোর্স এর শিয়ার ফোর্স এর ইনস্টে আসে তখন সেটাকে আমরা শিয়ার স্ট্রেস বলি ওকে ক্যান ইউ সি এখানে কিন্তু এটাই লেখা সো স্ট্রেসেস ফর টেনশন এন্ড কম্প্রেশন সিগমা দিস ইজ সিগমা ওকে এটাকে সিগমা বলা হয় So this is sigma. Okay. Sigma equals to F divided by A. A ki A hoche cross sectional area. Okay. And when shear load is taken, shudhu loader puri vartta jokhan shear load ni ho, ta kaun sheta ke bala hove shear stress. Okay. So you can see in this diagram okay to ekhane ki ache ekhane amar tensile load dhora hoyeche so my cross sectional area uh, tensile load divided by cross sectional area will be stress ar ekhane shear load dhora hoyeche je shear shear load dhora hoyeche so the stress is shear stress f divided by a clear yes sir strain strain ta ki strain is the change of length divided by original length okay strain hote deformation divided by original if it is length then length if it is area then area if it is uh, cubic sorry yes area is area okay so strain ka ke bolbo strain hocche je deformed je weight ta ache jodi amar ekhane length er decrease ba increase hoy that change divided by the original length ar jodi area er khetre ami boli change of area divided by the original area okay strain ta ke ki bola hocche strain is deformation of the component divided by original length so delta l delta l divided by l not change in length divided by change original length okay okay so let's go forward torsional length torsional stress and strain so torsional ketre ki hobe সেম ওয়েতে আমার শিয়ার এর ক্ষেত্রে যেটা হয়েছে আমার নরমাল ফোর্স এর ক্ষেত্রে যেটা হয়েছে টর্শনাল ক্ষেত্র ঠিক সেটাই হবে টর্শনাল ফোর্স ডিভাইডেড বাই এরিয়া রাইট ইন দিস কেস देयर আর টু डिफरेंट থিংস দ্যাট ইজ টর্শনাল স্ট্রেস ইজ लेट मी ড্র ওকে torsional stress is expressed with tau this is tau okay tau equals to t into rho divided by j we will come to this in solid mechanics okay jokhon amra solid mechanics porbo tokhon amra eta sathe jabo so ekhon porjonto jeta ache seta hocche je tau equals to t into rho divided by j ওকে আই এম পরে এটাকে তোমাদের ডিসকাস করব যখন আমরা টর্শন এখানেও কিছুটা আছে তখন আমরা টর্শনের সময় এটা ডিসকাস করব এন্ড স্ট্রেনটা কিভাবে করা হবে স্ট্রেনটা আমার নির্ধারণ করা হবে অ্যাঙ্গেল অফ টুইস্টের মাধ্যমে ওকে সো যখনই আমার এটাকে যদি আমি এখান থেকে দেখি টপ ভিউ যদি দেখি টপ ভিউ যদি দেখি তাহলে তো এরকম দেখাবে তাই না সো আমার একটা ফোর্স কাজ করছে এই দিকে একটা ফোর্স কাজ করছে এই দিকে যদি একদম টপ ভিউ থেকে দেখি সো কি হচ্ছে আমার যে এই ফোর্স এর জন্য প্রথমে যে পয়েন্টটা যদি একটা পয়েন্ট যদি এখানে থাকে টুইস্টিং এর জন্য আমার সেই পয়েন্টটা এখানে ট্রাভেল করে সো আমি যদি আমার সেন্টার থেকে লাইন টানি তাহলে পরে আমার সেম পয়েন্ট আমি 
একটা টাইমে ছিল টি ওয়ান টাইমে ছিল এখানে টি টু টাইমে এখানে সো আমার অ্যাকচুয়ালি এই কোনটা ক্রিয়েট হয় দ্যাট ইস শোন এস ফাই সাই ওকে এটাই হচ্ছে অ্যাঙ্গেল অফ টুইস্ট আর ইউ ক্লিয়ার সেটা এখানে চলে আসলো what will be the change in the area for angle of twist what will be the change in area okay it depends there are certain equations will come through in me mechanics of solids okay amra solid mechanics set niye kotha bolbo so let's not waste our time here okay so the shear modulus so je bhabe amra ekhon porjonto strain ber korechi right shear strain now we are going to find out shear modulus shear modulus is tau divided by gamma what is tau tau is the shear stress divided by shear strain acha eta amra pore ashi first amra stress and strain er jinish ta pore ashi tar por amra eta porte parbo okay now the concept of stress and strain are pretty much uh, familiar to you i guess now mechanical behavior actually depends more on this stress strain diagrams so what we do stress ta ki chilo amader stress chilo force per area right stress is force per area and our strain is difference of length divided by previous length right elongation per deformation okay so while we if we plot a graph against this stress and strain this graph will actually give us character of a lot of materials or a lot of metals okay so mechanical behavior can be determined with this stress strain diagram okay this is the uh, one of the very most commonly used and a very widely appreciated way so in case of tensile test suppose i'm going to tensile test ko ki hai karu let's show you i'm going to stop kore dei my god it's all rush we want to do a tensile test okay so what we are going to do we take an object we take an object this is also a part of your sessional you will come across with this sessional uh, very soon so this is an object suppose so what we need to do if we want to give a tensile load so we need to apply force in both side right tahole ki hobe a new a new length will come down right so length barbe so what we do we have uh, we have a machine called utm okay universal testing machine okay so what utm does is they apply the force on this they apply this force on this 
object and it creates a tension so tension create color for a what what they have they have sensors in different areas okay first we calculate the area with slide calipers okay suppose it can be 10 millimeter square so you can make the area take a area near amra object a machine of washer machine of washer for we apply tensile force and with the help of different sensors and measurement pro procedure we find out the delta l okay we find out the difference of length created and also a f to amra janayache because we are applying load through this machine right so force of thakbe so jokhon amar eta thake tokhon i have stress which is sigma goes to f by a and i have strain which is delta l by l okay these two are predetermined so we apply force and we see how much is delta l so while we have different forces journey other a sigma among epsilon i'm running near we plot a curve okay we plot this curve and then our sigma versus epsilon curve is created okay a epsilon and sigma versus epsilon curve to a stress strain diagram to come the rock high the phone it are put it depend core i'm not even a behavior analyze for the very okay let's go forward then we'll understand more so first time a key to look at me already could ask you should have channel stress such a force per area and strain which is del del by l okay deformation divided by original length now johan ami ekta stress strain diagram agbo i will see a definite behavior of this diagram okay so there are four or five four points four or five special things that we come across in this diagram first one is first one is this sigma p okay this is the proportional limit this is called proportional limit then sigma y this will be called yield strength or proof stress sigma uts that means ultimate strength and then epsilon f that is failure in a strain to failure so x okay so on our strain tag there strain is shot a shot a amar stress to change with a bit so i'm a rector point for junto if i see in this curve a point for junto it's a linear curve right linearly is just straightforward but a for junto bar for a you can see the behavior changes slightly okay a portion to get into linearly insta grow Korea afterwards it changes a little bit so this is the last point where linear proportion linear progression is shown so that is why it is called the proportional limit will come across this the next slide just see the points okay linear progression that is called linear proportional limit okay are you getting my point or not yes sir okay keep posting your names please in the chat box okay so linear proportional part the second one is yield strength sigma y okay then afterwards it comes uh, ultimate tensile strength and then the elongation strain to failure okay so let's go forward then we'll come across 
the specific names okay so what is yield strength in this curve this yield strength is showing us that a permanent deformation of material will occur so ami jodi ei puro eta ke puro progression ta ke dui ta bhage bhag kori tahole ami dekhte pabo je amar dui ta region ache one is elastic region another one is plastic region okay elastic region ki if my stress versus strain remains in the left side of this region okay where is that if my curve is in this region okay a region e joto kon thakbe this will be elastic that means my deformation will come back to its original position if i remove the force ami force apply korchi remember stress is force by area and strain is delta l by l okay so joto kon amar force per area r man is in this elastic a strainer against a elastic region ache ami jodi force shoriye feli if i remove the force then what will happen the object or material will come back to its original position sir yes sir this p point is that proportional limit point sir from that point yes yes sir yes this is the sigma p our sigma p er man এর নিচে যত আমার সিগমা থাকবে পুরোটাই আমাকে ইলাস্টিক ডিফরমেশন দিবে দ্যাট मींस ইফ আই রিমুভ দি স্ট্রেস দেন ব্যাটারিয়াল রিটার্নস টু ইটস অরিজিনাল সাইজ ওকে ইফ আই ক্রস দিস ওয়ান দ্যাট উইল বি ইরিভার্সিবল ওকে ইফ আই স্ট্রেস ইজ রিমুভড ম্যাটেরিয়াল ডাজ নট কাম টু ইটস অরিজিনাল পজিশন সো দিস ইজ आवर সিগমা পি অর প্রপোর্শনাল লিমিট যেটা আমরা বলছিলাম সেটা ওকে সো সি দিস ডিফরমেশন डिफरेंट মেটাল উইল গিভ ইউ डिफरेंट সর্টস অফ ডিফরমেশন অর डिफरेंट সর্টস অফ ইওর ক্যারেক্টারিস্টিকস ওকে সো মোস্ট অফ দ্য মেটালস ইউ উইল সি that after the elastic limit it goes up and some aluminum alloys this will go like this and some low carbon steel such as mild steel so this will have a different sort of shape okay so you can see the difference according to the material same thing stress versus strain diagram but it is different for each material okay but there is a homogeneity a homogeneity is where if you see this point 0.002 0.002 is shown in everywhere 0.002 0.002 right 0.2% right everywhere is shown here so what this 0.02 is actually meaning this is where yield strength comes okay when we apply any stress to a material it deforms some of the deformation is elastic and the material can recover when the stress is relieved but some deformation is permanent and the material cannot recover from it so a straight line is drawn from point 002 at some slope at the same slope from initial initial position okay this point of intersection of new line is projected and the stress value is like this so point 002 is a point at strain where we can say most of the materials will give us the yield strength okay is it clear excuse me sir you are not audible sir now you can hear sir yes sir okay what is yield strength yield strength is the 
Permanent point, deprivation point, sir. Point after which, point after which it starts to create fracture or other or other breaking down procedures. Okay, so by different ways it has been seen that if I apply if I apply this point zero zero two and draw a slope over this curve then yield strength will come according to that okay why it is not changing okay so ultimately a uh, different uh, different material will give you different what should i say different graphs but ultimately uh, formulation of graphs looks like this if I tell you that write an ideal stress versus strain diagram, you have to draw like this, okay? So you have to show the elastic region, then plastic deformation, and then necking. Okay, we'll come to necking later. So firstly, what you have, you are putting a strain, your graph goes linearly upward, okay? So at the end of your, uh, what should I say, elastic limit, then your graph will start changing and there will be a small deformation area. So it, this is lower yield strength. This is upper yield strength, okay? Y is equals to yield strength. This is the upper limit and this is the lower limit, okay? So Yes. That's the time she's showing. Okay, I'll wrap up quickly. Just it is the he says for she. So upper you listen and lower is change. Afterwards, your graph goes like this, and there is a point at which your metal will start breaking. Okay, this will be called what? Cable bow. This one, okay. right? Ultimate, ultimate point. Where is the cursor? Ultimate point, sigma UTS, ultimate tensile strength, okay? Afterwards, it starts to having cracks and tries to break. When it breaks down, then at the end of the, at the point B, it actually breaks down, okay? So if you are asked to draw a stress versus strain diagram, this should be your ideal diagram where you have to give all the all these points okay okay on the next class i will try to discuss this more and we will we'll go forward with more with more examples and other things. I hope every one of you has written your names and roll numbers. Thank you for joining the class. We'll see you in the next week. Thank you, sir.